Hi, Clarissa Mosley, psychologist, psychotherapist and director of Calm Mind Psychology. Today we're going to talk about this dreadful feeling that occurs particularly with people with ADHD when they've got the experience of being rejected. Rejection sensitive dysphoria is an awful internal experience. And in this video, I'm going to help you understand what it is, what to do about it, and how you might prevent further attacks. So let's start with the obvious fact that nobody likes to get rejected. It's probably one of the most painful experiences we as humans can feel, but it's more painful and disorientating for people that have got ADHD. And the reason for this is that ADHD is not an issue with not enough attention. It's actually an issue with too much attention and often too many emotions. Dr. Barclay wanted to rename ADHD as VAST, Variable Attention Stimulus Trait. So basically, you've got too much attention that doesn't get funneled properly and often too much emotion that cannot be inhibited. Actually, ADHD is more about inhibiting everything that's going on as it is about not having enough attention or emotions to go out. And so in studying people with ADHD, they found that a common feature of this was this dreadful dysphoria, this horrible feeling of unease that occurred when the person felt they were being rejected. So what does this feel like? Well, it's kind of like someone punched you in the gut. You can often feel this deep, sick feeling in the pit of your stomach, like something f suddenly opened up and you fell through a hole. Your mind can go blank or offline or be filled with horrible thoughts about yourself and what's happening. You can feel wobbly, disoriented, like your world is crumbling. And you'll definitely probably have tunnel vision, which means you cannot perceive reality well, let alone read or respond to text messages. You're basically flooded and you're kind of like a kid that's just been kicked out of the team or pushed out of the clubhouse. So the internal feeling of RSD is awful. It's dysphoric, it's low, and it's disoriented. If you trace this feeling down into the core beliefs, you might find yourself with the core belief, I am worthless, I am unlovable, nobody wants me, I am alone, or I will always be alone. So these are the fundamental feelings of dread when we feel rejected, and they are amplified in certain people, particularly people who've got ADHD. Now, we have to distinguish this feeling of extreme dysphoria at the thought of feeling of being rejected in ADHD people or other people that might just have this as a feature from borderline personality disorder where the feeling can also occur. But the distinguishing factor is duration. RSD is short-lived. If you've had an episode of feeling absolutely gut-wrenchingly awful and disoriented at the thought of feeling of being rejected or abandoned, it is time limited. It may last from minutes to hours, but it goes away. If someone has the same experience in borderline personality disorder, it can be ever-present lurking in the background and it can last for a lot longer or deteriorate into a mood. Because once borderlines get dysregulated into a mood, it can be really hard to get out of it. So there's an issue with duration and how often it shows up and how long it lasts and how often it's sort of in the background because the core feature of borderline personality is the fear of abandonment, which is chronic and persistent. RSD is around rejection. And of course, like I mentioned, nobody wants to be rejected. Nobody feels good when they're rejected, but it's far more acute in people with ADHD. And this is because, as mentioned, there is not enough emotional gating or regulation or inhibition. And so like once the brain circuits are kicked into action, they persist, but they do recover. And so when you're having an episode of, of RSD, there'll be a neurochemical peptide, which are the chemicals of emotion, cascading through your brain and body. But if you can allow time for them to wash out, 
you can get back on your feet and back into your adult self with your frontal lobes and your executive functions back online and then you will be able to see the situation clearly. So let's look at the risk factors for RSD, when this can happen. First, we'll start with physiologically. Understand where your weak parts of the day are. If you're text messaging or having big long arguments with your partner or discussions that could be tenuous and they're happening at night, this can be a risk point for a lot of people. For a lot of people, this is where they feel lower and vulnerable. It's probably because your body wants you to be asleep and they can be far more easily triggered. For some people, it's in the morning before their executive functions have come online, before they're fully awake. They're kind of raw and foggy and fuzzy and things aren't seen straight. And so they're more vulnerable to having an RSD episode. You're also more vulnerable if you're under the influence of alcohol because you haven't got your frontal lobe fully engaged. If you're on drugs or coming down from drugs, and I think often for some women around the premenstrual time when you are often more vulnerable and all of the sort of core wounding stuff is more active. So be aware if you're in a high risk time in your life or day. For RSD, be also aware of high risk situations. If something's new, you know, online dating is a hotbed of this sort of experiences, early dating relationships, early newly forming friendships, um, relationships of, you know, they could be work or colleagues where you haven't quite got the boundaries established. You're not too sure about what that person thinks about you. And so you're extra vulnerable. People with RSD tend to be people pleasers also. Because the experience of rejection is so acutely painful, the compensatory strategy is to become a people pleaser. So you'll do things for people, you'll show up for them, you'll put yourself out there, you'll try and impress, you'll, you'll try to be nice in order to not have this rejection sensitivity triggered. But of course this can backfire, it's a double-edged sword. You're being nice with the expectation of reciprocity. And if people don't reciprocate this niceness, kindness, gestures, you can be equally as devastated. Now, this is one of the other areas of vulnerability for having this experience is when you're kind of wide open, you've put yourself out there, you have expectations of what might happen. Think about the kid at school and they've got this fantasy of making new friends or being in the clubhouse and then they get kicked out. It's devastating. So the more expectations you have around a situation, the more of an internal fantasy you've developed about a person or a relationship, the more likely you are to be let down if these things don't unfold. Part of the prevention of RSD is to be aware of your expectations and your conscious or unconscious fantasies about a person or an experience. If you don't have any high expectations or if you're not putting yourself out there in this great state of open vulnerability, then you're less likely to get triggered into being let down or feeling rejected in your attempts. An average an example would be you've sent a text. Maybe you were trying to be funny or joking around and, and you don't get an answer. And so you start to think, what did I say? Did they take that wrong? Oh my God, I've just read it again. What if they read it the wrong way? Or why haven't they answered me? What's going on? Are they ghosting me? Am I, uh, have I, you know, am I out? All of these thoughts, all of this narrative, all of this story starts to get made up in your head. Now, I want to sort of kindly say to you that not everything is about you. What could be happening is that they are busy, they're at work, an emergency's come up, their phone batteries died, there are many reasons why somebody doesn't respond to your text in the time and in the way that you expect. So again, that's a matter of leveling your expectations and just sort of getting in touch with an alternate narrative that could explain the situation just as well. Obviously, in early stage relationships, there is a vulnerability. We are kind of on trial. We are trying to test where the boundaries are, what it is that people like and don't like. If you're a people pleaser, this is going to be amplified. You'll probably be working overtime to be liked. So be aware of this. Take ownership of your own need and desire to be accepted and liked. And be aware, again, 
that people have got their own stuff going on. Not everyone responds in the way that you would like them to, and not everyone's as nice as you. <laughs> so if you've been overcome by an episode of RSD, like it, it can just happen for all of your best intentions to level your expectations, construct alternate narratives and stories about situations, you can still be flooded with the rejection-sensitive dysphoria what to do. First, don't go into further stories about what a loser you are or how horrible they are. Know that when you're in this state, your better judgment is way offline. You are flooded by neurochemicals and peptides that are going to completely distort your better judgment. Your adult self has gone and been taken over by a really upset inner child. So don't abandon yourself into stories about what a horrible person you are or somebody else is. And by that I mean take care of your inner child at that time. Take care of what's happening for yourself at that time. Be aware that it's a time-limited state. The more you are aware of that, you don't carry on the story and the words that are usually oriented around something that boils down to, I am worthless nobody cares about me, nobody wants me, etc, etc. It really exposes this core wound of lack of self-worth, but it is momentary. If you allow it, this too will pass. So you can do this by awareness, by mindfulness. You can actually focus in and go, okay, this is happening. I'm not going to make a story about this. I'm not going to go with the distorted perception that I will absolutely have at this time and believe those terrible things about myself. I'm going to tune into this feeling and allow it time and space to dissipate. Now, some people can tolerate this because it's a really horrible feeling. You can just tolerate it with open curiosity. Or you can try changing scene and moving. This will also help the neurochemicals to disperse. If you can get out in nature, that is the best thing. You might be able to stretch, do some movement, do something that's going to switch your attention, keep your mind off the subject and allow your body and mind time to allow these neurochemicals to disperse and tell yourself this too will pass. This too will pass. And in time, you'll be back into your adult, normal, better judgment kind of a self. And then if you want, you can return to whatever it was that was the trigger and reevaluate it with fresh eyes. But don't do this until you're feeling really back in the driver's seat with your big kid pants on or your big adult pants on. We don't want your inner child doing any of this. You want to take care of them, wait until they've settled down and then get back into the state where you can actually look at things from a broader perspective. Because when you're in RSD, you have tunnel vision. You can only see this narrow focus that will probably reinforce and reaffirm the feeling that you are worthless or helpless or unwanted or rejected. So wait until you feel fully present in yourself again. And if you can then, you can go and reevaluate the situation, the text message stream. You may be able to check out with the other person in a nice way what did you actually mean when you didn't respond or when you responded this way? I'm just curious. Do it in an open, inviting way because know that they've got their own stuff going on too. If it was an experience with a real person, you may be able to get back to them to check out reality with them or you can simply develop an alternate narrative of your own. They could have been having a bad day this could have happened, they might not have meant it that way, this isn't the end of the world. At the end of the day, always remember to be kind to yourself. This is not a personal fault. If you suffer from RSD, it's a function of how your brain operates. If you've got ADHD and you're aware of it, then you'll know that there are certain things that are just different and maybe a little bit difficult and some things are easier for you. But at the bottom, you have a lot going on and you think and you feel a lot 
And that is just a feature of who you are. And so you are going to feel everything a little bit more strongly than your average person. And so just be kind to yourself in this individual difference in who you are and follow my tips that I've presented in this video and see if they help you. If they do, please drop me a comment in the box below. If you like this video and you found it helpful, hit the like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And I thank you for being with me and may you please have a beautiful day.